this is your tutor, Blanca Rangel. And today I'm gonna show you how to solve problem. Nine point thirty-seven of night. So let's get to it. So we have the problem is asking us how much work you must do to push a ten kilogram block of steel across a steel table at steady speed of one meter per second for three seconds. So let's solve this first word first. Okay, so strategy always make a drawing. So we're gonna make a drawing of this. So we're gonna have a horizontal surface. We have our block. This is 10 kilograms, and this is a steel against a steel. Why is that important? Here's giving us the two surfaces that are touching against each other. So we know that it's a siding and we know this as kinetic friction. So we know that this, we have to account for this problem for kinetic friction. And since this is still against the steel, the coefficient of friction according to the book is 0 0.6. So since here we're gonna be working with forces I'm going to make a free body diagram. So we're going to have the 10 kilogram box. We're going to have the force of gravity, force normal, the force of your push, and kinetic friction. So we know another clue that they've given us is that it's moving at a steady speed. So what steady speed means again? It means acceleration equals to zero meters per second square in the x-axis. So this is what I'm going to do. In order to find work, I'm going to use this definition of work. Work equals the dot product of the vector F times the displacement vector. Or the dot product, in other words, it would be the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the, of the distance times cosine of the angle. Okay, so let's find first the force of push, because this is the force that you're going to be applying towards the system. Okay, so we're going to do the summation of the forces in X equals to zero, because we have zero steady speed, and the summation of forces in Y equals to zero, because it's not moving up and down. So the summation of forces in the X, we have force push minus force of kinetic friction equals zero. So force of push equals kinetic friction. And the same goes over here. Force normal minus force of gravity equals to zero. So the force normal equals to the force of gravity. So force push equals normal force times New times the coefficient of friction and force normal equals mass and gravity. So the force of the push equals new kinetic mass and gravity. So force push equals zero point zero point six times ten kilograms times 9.81. So the force of push is 
0 0.6 times 10 times 9.81, 58.86. Newtons. So we found the force. Now we need to find the distance. So here is giving us another clue. Acceleration is zero, okay? And we travel at one meter per second for three seconds. So I can use my kinematic equations to do this. So I'm gonna have I'm going to use my first kinematic equation, that is the final position equals the initial position plus initial velocity time plus one half acceleration time square. Okay. Let's say it starts at zero and it moves x meters. So, again, this is zero. This is zero. So the final position equals initial velocity, one meter per second times seconds. It makes sense, right? It moves one meter per second. So in three seconds, it moves three meters. So now we know the change in distance. And we know this. So now the angle the angle that we're going to use is the angle between the movement of the force, the movement of the object, the movement of the object, so this is moving in the x, and the force that's applied. So the force is applied in the x-axis. So these two, these two have a, have a degree, of zero. So cosine of zero equals to one. So let's calculate the force. So the work of this object. Sorry, I just realized I'm not supposed to do that. Okay. Just an FYI. Work is not a vector. And we learned that, at least in this case, and we learned that later today. So work is the dot product of these two objects. So cosine of zero is one. So we have uh, 50, the force 58.86 times the distance three meters. So this is going to give us 58.86 times three, 176.58 joules of energy. Perfect. So we found the work applied. Now it's asking us to find the power. So power Power is defined as work over time. So you have three seconds. So we have three seconds. So this is 176.58 over three seconds equals 58.86 watts over second. Oh no, we joules over second, and this becomes 59 watts of power. All right, that's it for this problem. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at barangelrod at minors minors.utep.edu or contact your professor. Thank you and have a nice day.